Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I have a bit of a sew and tell video for you. About a month ago, just over a month ago I think, I think it was the end of July, I posted a video about clearing out my handmade wardrobe and working out which things I was going to give to charity, give to fabric recycling or to um, alter or refashion. And I've done some of my alterations and refashions which I'm so pleased about. It's obviously you know, slowly does it, but I'm gonna gradually try and work through more and more by the end of the year. So the first thing that I did is alter my Megan Nielsen Cottesloe swimsuit. I made it in this amazing leopard print swim fabric from Minerva Crafts, and I added ruffles at the hips. And basically, <laughs> I had a bit of a mishap with it because the this amazing swimsuit fabric is really lovely and stretchy but i lined it in um power mesh now i really struggled to know what to line my swimsuit with because everybody kept recommending swimsuit lining but then when i was going on fabric shops and typing in swimsuit lining like i wasn't i wasn't really sure what i was looking for like nothing called swimwear lining was coming up and i was a bit worried about ordering the wrong thing but on the Love to Sew podcast, when they did a swimwear episode, they really highly recommended Power Mesh. So that's what I've used, but it's not at all as stretchy as my outer fabric. So it ended up being a bit small for me. So what I've done, and particularly in the length of the body, it was like, I've got a really long body and it was a bit short in the body. So what I've done is actually add, sorry, I'm just a bit weird showing you the crotch of my swimming costume, but I don't know if you can see here, but I've actually added a pan, a little panel a little strip of extra fabric in the crotch to give me a little bit of extra length in the body. Now you guys all warned me quite rightly that adding that strip at the crotch would make it a little bit more high legged but I kind of wanted the swimsuit to be a little bit more high legged anyway so that was fine and um, yeah I definitely want to make another Cottesloe next summer and if I use the power mesh again I'll probably size up on the outer fabric no, size up on the power mesh. Anyway, I want to make another one and get the sizing a little bit better, but for now this has made this one wearable. It's not so like tight in the body. So successful alteration number one, complete. The next thing that I altered, I'm sorry, this is a bit crumpled because it's actually just come out of my suitcase um, and I haven't washed it yet. So sorry, I'm showing you a grubby, dirty dress, but I hope you don't mind. Um, this, I'll put a picture in actually because it's quite hard to show you, but this is my Megan, no it's not, yes it is, it's my Tilly and the Buttons Megan dress. Um, and as you can see it's like a sweet little relatively high necked round necked dress with little cap sleeves and then it comes down into a sort of not particularly fitted skirt and I've added ruffles on the end of mine. I love a good ruffle hem. But essentially the neckline was really gaping at the back, like I'm not quite sure what that particular fit issue is. I think it might be something to do with the fact that I've got really quite like flat shoulders. I don't have sloping shoulders and I think this pattern is drafted to fit a person with sloping shoulders a bit better than my type of shoulders. Which meant that it wasn't sitting flat on my shoulder, the dress was like poking up like a bit, not that extreme obviously, but it was like sticking up from my shoulder and then the neckline, especially at the back, the neckline was just standing away from my body, it really fitted really badly. So what I did is I, I had been putting this off honestly for probably 18, I think I made this dress probably about two years ago. And the reason I've been putting it off is because obviously to alter it, it's got, it's got a facing on the inside of the neckline, so that involved unpicking the facing, la la la. I hate unpicking, so I put it off and off, but I basically took it in a little bit at the shoulder, not took it in exactly, but I just, I changed it from being sort of sloping upwards like this, I just took a little bit off to flatten it out, and then I added some darts in, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, sorry about my chip nail varnish, um, but I added darts, and you'll see this was before I was particularly good at invisible zips, because my zip is very visible. But um, yeah, I added some darts in the back neckline, and that means that it now sits really nicely, well, no, it's still not perfect, but it sits an awful lot better than it did when I first made it, which now means that I'm so much happier wearing it. Like before, if I wore, if I had like a handbag with me and I put the strap on my shoulder, 
it made it just looked awful because it really made it obvious how the dress was just like sitting away from my shoulders and my and my neck but now I think I'm hoping that I'm gonna get way more wear out of this probably next summer now because we're coming into autumn now aren't we but um yeah I think it was a really worthwhile alteration long overdue but yeah just changing the slope of the shoulders a bit and adding the darts in the back neckline has really done wonders to make it so much more wearable so that's really good next I have an alteration and a refashion I guess it's more of a refashion than an alteration but basically I made a sew over it eve dress a while ago probably about a year ago and I've never I've worn it once to work and I was so uncomfortable felt so not myself I think just the wrap dress thing isn't a very good look on my figure because I've got broader shoulders, slightly smaller hips and wrap dresses really skim your hips which is so flattering on people with slightly larger hips but to be honest for me it just made me look a bit like a... Uh, it just made me look like I had really big shoulders and tiny like boyish hips, it just wasn't flattering at all and also it just didn't fit me very well either, I think the, the shaping comes from gathers across the bust and I just felt like I had way too much fabric at the top and it was way too like slim at the bottom so I chopped the bodice off I'm gonna have to put pictures of this in for you because I'm afraid it's the, it's all currently wet drying because we got back from holiday yesterday and I have washed everything and it's wet so I can't really show it to you but I'll put pictures in I literally chopped off the bodice literally just got my scissors didn't even bother unpicking I just chopped it off and then a real bodge job here I literally just folded the top of the skirt over a couple of times to create I put some interfacing in as well but to create like a waistband so yeah I put some interfacing in folded the top of the skirt over twice stitched it down Bob's your uncle I turned it from a dress that just didn't suit me I felt really frumpy and I was never gonna wear it and now I've got a really cute summery little um, wrap skirt brilliant so much more wearable However, I will say that I didn't, I was in a little bit of a rush because we just got back from a week's holiday in California, which is, it was absolutely amazing. I've saved a load of stories on my highlights on my Instagram and I've been posting some outfit photos from our holiday on my Instagram. So I'll leave my Instagram below if you want to know more about what we got up to in California and um, go and check out my Instagram and my story highlights. Um, but I was in a bit of a rush to get it done before we left for California, so I, um, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, I didn't take as much time as I should have done because the skirt is actually still a bit big. I'd kind of forgotten that one of the problems with the Eve dress is that it was too big for me, which is annoying because I find so over it's sizing really big. Like, I often find their smallest size too big for me. But I usually wear, like in the shops I'll wear a size 8 and their sizing goes down to a size 6. I'm like that's really annoying if I'm usually a size 8 and their size 6 is too big. So I'm not a fan of sew over its um, sizing unfortunately. But I forgot that it was too big for me so the wrap skirt is now still too big for me. Luckily it doesn't really matter because with a wrap skirt you can obviously just wrap it around more. But the wrap skirt you basically feed the, um, you feed the it's got two ties on the end of the skirt and you feed one of the ties through a hole and like pull it through and it means that the edge of the skirt like pulls all the way through the hole. I don't know if I described that very well but instead of just having the, the tie coming through the hole an actual little chunk of the skirt has to be pulled through the hole as well to make it like small enough to tie around my waist. So I think what I really should do is put it back on the alteration pile and take it in a little bit. Um, but I'm not sure I'm gonna bother. We'll see. We'll see how much wear, if it stops me wearing it, then I'll do it. But if I wear it anyway, then it doesn't really matter. Oh, but that's one other thing I did have to do when I altered it though, is I um, had to add the hole back in. So on the Eve dress, the little slit in the side of the dress that you poke the ties through, like crosses over where the bodice meets the skirt. So by chopping off the bodice, I obviously like basically create like instead of having a, a you know like a gap I then had just an opening so I had to stitch that up and I had to create another hole like a little bit lower down from the waistband but that was pretty simple it didn't take that long just a little bit of unpicking and then a little bit of stitching again 
but yeah, really pleased with that. And then, so this is an alteration, this is just a new make, but I'm really pleased with it because I did some scrap busting. I have this here for you, but it's a bit crumpled, sorry, it needs to go in the wash. But um, with the leftover fabric, because I had some leftover fabric anyway from when I originally made the Eve dress, I made an Ogden cami. Oh, to our matching, I'm wearing an Ogden cami today as well in this um, cotton lawn. Cotton lawn. Um, but this is, yeah, the um, one made of leftover fabric from the Eve dress. I actually ended up, I did some crazy pattern Tetris, like seriously was trying to squeeze it out of no fabric at all. And I did, I couldn't quite manage it purely out of the scraps. So this is also kind of a refashion as well because I ended up having to use, um, I cho chopped up the bodice basically from the Eve dress to create the last few pieces that I needed to make my Ogden cami. Um, and I love it, it's really like drapey and nice. And I've worn it with, my the wrap skirt so it's kind of like a faux dress and I love that I love that having separates allows you to be so much more flexible like I can wear this top just with a pair of jeans or a pair of shorts or a skirt whatever and like again I can wear the skirt with loads of other things too or I can wear them together and then they kind of look a bit like a dress winning I just love that versatility um but yeah you will see on this that I really did have to I had to create a center front and the centre back to be able to get the pattern pieces on and I had to do something a bit funny with the front here I had to kind of I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see very well but you see how I've got a seam here so I did have to actually Frankenstein together a few pieces of fabric to create the pattern pieces but it's so worth it because this otherwise would have been just like headed for the fabric scrap bin and I've got an Ogden cami out of it, so I think we all love an Ogden cami for a bit of scrap bust, blah, blah, blah. scrap busting though, don't we? Oh, and by the way, this fabric is like a viscose mix of some kind. I got really cheap from Crisp Street Market in East London, and I'm really pleased that I can now actually wear it in two different garments, so winning. Now I'm going to tell you about a brand new make that I've made from scratch, so this one isn't an alteration. Um, this is just a new make, and I had this beautiful um, like viscose linen from the fabric store, and I'd had it for a while, and I kept kind of change no, not from the fabric store, from myfabrics.co.uk, and I kept changing my mind about what I wanted to make with it, but I finally decided to make um, a hack, a trousers, I'd made the trousers from the New Look 6446 jumpsuit pattern. Now the pattern is a jumpsuit pattern. So it doesn't actually give you instructions of how to make a pair of trousers, but essentially you can just follow all the instructions for the trouser element of the jumpsuit and add a waistband, really. So it's quite, and obviously use a shorter zip. But it's really quite simple. So I've done it before in a yellow floral, also a viscose linen. And so this time I've made a plain pair, and I'll put a picture in because it's probably easier for you to see, but essentially they, um, I sort of nip in around my waist, they've got pockets, which as we know is the best thing ever. They have this sort of little tuck, tuck pleats on the front, one on each side, and then they're really wide legged and come down to be sort of like cropped, so they're almost a bit like a culotte really, because they are quite wide legged and flowy. And the real triumph with these is that I added belt loops, I've never added belt loops to anything before, but you can see my little belt loops here. I just followed a, an online tutorial, I just watched a couple of YouTube videos, worked out how to do it, and I'm so pleased! I did make them a little bit small though, I realised I was trying to really make them like sort of tight around the belt, and having since had a look at a couple of my pairs of jeans, I've realised I should have made them a little bit bigger because they've shrunk in the wash a little bit, so it's now quite tight to get the belt in and out, I should have given myself a bit more room, but never mind for next time I'll do that. But I'm just so pleased I've learned to make belt loops because I love to wear things with little like wasted belts and now having the ability to add belt loops to my handmade garments means that I can wear them with belts which is like a really sort of key part of how I like to dress that I can now have within my handmade wardrobe. This fabric, when I used the yellow, the yellow floral viscose linen, I found that it shrank loads. Like, I pre-washed it and everything, but what I mean is it, it shrinks a lot from when it's ironed to when it's not ironed, because it has the, like, 
sort of crinkly linen texture. And so with the yellow trousers that I made, they just, I don't want to have to iron them every time. So when I wear them not ironed, they are like a lot smaller than when I originally sewed them, which is fine. And I tried to anticipate that happening with these ones. So what I did is I actually added like an extra centimeter down the sides of all the pattern pieces. I over egged it. They're now way too big for me. I think that other yellow floral fabric has a bit of a crepey texture, which makes them even more crinkly. This fabric with hindsight is actually less crinkly, so it doesn't shrink up as much when it's not ironed. So these are now a bit big. <laughs> I wore them on my holiday anyway, and it was great to have just some like neutral coloured floaty trousers that I could throw on, particularly in the evening, um, when I wanted to be just a little bit more covered up. But I will have to alter them. I'm going to have to take them in all down the sides, and probably I'm going to take them in at the crotch as well, just because they feel, they do feel a little bit like a tent and they do stretch a little bit when I wear them so they could become even more like baggy and tent like so I'm going to slim these down to make them more similar to my yellow ones which are a little bit more slim legged but I think these are going to be such a summer staple for me obviously we're coming into autumn now so I'm probably not going to wear them that much for the rest of the year but t you know come next spring it'll be a true test of whether these were like a really good make or not I'm hoping they'll be a real staple more scrap busting. So the leftovers from these trousers, so the viscose linen, I made another trusty Ogden cami. Um, so I actually made this one and the one I showed you earlier at the same time. And it's the first time I've ever done some like simultaneous, what do, what do I call it? Bulk sewing. But I cut them both out at the same time. Both of them required a little bit of pattern Tetris because of um, trying to squeeze the pattern pieces onto the fabric that I had and again I also made this one a bit wider to allow for any like unironed shrinkage which again I shouldn't have actually done so I do need to take this one in at the sides because it's a little bit big and actually you can tell it's really cropped I had to chop quite a lot off of the bottom not chop off I just didn't have enough fabric to even cut it out the full length so in fact, I think I've got written down how much I took off. I took sort of about three centimetres off the length, which at the time I didn't think was going to be that much, but actually I have realised that works out to be quite a lot. So it is pretty cropped, but my sort of thought was that wearing this with my like high-waisted trousers could be really cute. And again, it's a bit like a faux jumpsuit. And again, I get the versatility of being able to wear them separately or together. So yeah, these both <laughs> do need a bit of alteration, but they will then, I'm hoping, be, be really, really great, like staples in my wardrobe, fingers crossed. I'm also really pleased that I've done a bit of sewing with plain fabrics or solid fabrics rather than prints, because really sort of assessing my wardrobe, I've realized that actually I really like wearing plain colors and I'm not one for sort of lots of novelty prints and that kind of thing. There's certain prints I love, but um, yeah, I think really I'm drawn to a lot of more plain things. So I'm really gonna try and focus moving forward on sticking to like my color palette of colors that I love and like some really lovely quality fabrics that kind of speak for themselves in terms of like color and texture and quality of fabric rather than needing like loud, bold prints to do the talking. Yeah, it's just a look that I yeah, I'm hoping to focus on that a lot more. So that's all the sewing that I've done, all the alterations, scrap busting Ogden camis and my new pair of summery trousers. Um, but I want to talk to you about a make that I've got coming up. Um, I think I think I might do like a whole separate video on autumn sewing plans because I'm definitely getting excited for autumn sewing now. I've had the most amazing summer and I've just been on holiday and it was so hot in California. It was like at least it was like between 35 and 40 degrees like every day it was it was so hot I couldn't believe it so I'm actually really pleased to be home and have a bit more it's actually really sunny and beautiful today but it's a bit fresh which is just lovely um but yeah autumn sewing is so on my radar because I've realized on my holiday as you'll see on my Instagram I managed to wear handmade items almost every single day which just felt amazing that I had so many nice like summery makes that I love wearing 
it's just felt brilliant but I definitely don't have that when it comes to winter in the winter I'm all about high necks long sleeves everywhere like high-waisted jeans usually like a nipped in waist with like a crop jumper or something I have a couple of cropped south banks that I like to wear but I just don't have that many wintry things that I've made so I really want to focus on bulking out my winter autumn winter handmade wardrobe now this fabric is what I want to show you. This is a beautiful, like aubergine, purpley coloured, um, ribbed knit fabric, and it's from Sew by the Sea. And the lovely Jen from Sew by the Sea, they're on Instagram as Sew by the Sea Margate, but I'll put all the information in the link below, in the description box below. Jen got in touch with me, and I was so flattered, like so, so flattered. She basically said, would you like to choose something from our website? And hopefully it might end up in one of your videos. And I thought, absolutely I would absolutely love to so I had great fun looking through the website and they've got some beautiful things on there I was really really tempted by I'm not sure if they're still if they've still got it but they had this jersey fabric it was navy blue and it had like like green leaves and orange tigers on it and it was just beautiful I've seen some people on Instagram who've made things with it I was so tempted to get it but again I sort of had to check myself and say, Lizzie, you uh, you know that you want to be wearing solid colours more. You know that solid colours are what you're drawn to. So I didn't go for the beautiful tiger navy one. I went for this like purple one. And actually purple, I think it's a colour that does quite suit me, but I don't have anything purple in my wardrobe these days. So it would be really nice to have some purple in my life. And to tell you a bit about it, it costs £4.25 per half metre, so a really good price. I got two metres of it, it's 140 centimetres wide, and the plan is that I want to make a, a True Bias Niku dress. I've already made two Niku dresses before, and um, I've made a full length like green short sleeved one, and I've made a shorter like bodycon hack in velvet. I would admit neither of them were, I kind of think of both of them as wearable twirls because they both ended up not quite right in terms of fit and or fabric choice. So the green one, the fabric is just way too thick and heavy for it to be like a summer maxi dress, which is what I intended it to be. So that's in the alterations slash refashion pile. And the blue velvet one is too small. It's too tight across the chest. I've got horrible like drag lines. That's also in the refashion slash alteration pile. I'm really hoping that between those two like wearable twirls I'll be able to get the fit on my next one much much better so this I very much have it in mind to be I'm hoping to have enough fabric to do the full sleeves obviously the high neck and then I want it to be like about knee length with some small slits at the side because I want to wear it in winter and autumn with black tights high knee high boots that kind of thing so that's the plan for this and I will keep you posted on how I get on but I'm, I think this might be my very next make. I'm really excited about it. So thank you so much to Sew by the Sea. Um, I, yeah, I can't wait to, I can't wait to sew it up. So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this sort of sew and tell and a little bit of a catch up video. Um, I will see you in my next one, which I'm hoping won't be quite so far away this time. Now, I had a really busy August, but now holidays are done, everything else is sort of, all the summer stuff that I've been up to is out the way, so I'm hoping to make a lot more videos and do a lot more sewing. But thanks ever so much for watching, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!